Hi, everybody. Hi. Aku namaste. Yes, chapter 22. Right? So hopefully we'll be happier with this chapter than the previous one. No, no, no. Last chapter was good. It's just long. <laughs> <clears throat> Once again, Sorry. no PowerPoint. Yes, yeah, so point. let's start off with a short prayer, and before that, let me go live. All right, so can we close our eyes, connect down to your palate, inhale and exhale. Let's align ourselves to what we are here to do today, to enhance our knowledge and wisdom with the help of the great beings. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chua Kotsri, to Lord Mahagaviji Mele, thank you for your great, great blessings, for your priceless teachings. We humbly invoke for the blessings of all the great teachers and masters of theosophy, the great beings of knowledge, light, and wisdom. To the angels and beings of communication, our respective internet connections and Wi-Fi's, to our soul and divine self, we humbly ask for great, great blessings, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your tremendous patience upon us. Help us to have a deeper and clearer understanding of the priceless teachings being imparted to us today. Help us to use this knowledge, to assimilate this knowledge, so we may become better instruments to help manifest your plan on earth. Our limitations are not your limitations. We align our will to the will of God to help with your plan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With gratitude, with deep respect and love. Inhale and exhale, absorb the energy. Atma Namaste, everybody. Good evening. Happy Ganesh Chaturthi. Yes. Uh, oh, there you go, Deepa. Hi, Deepa. There's no Modax. Yes. I thought there'll be sweet show they, today. They don't have Modax in Bangalore. In Modax? Bangalore. Yeah, the, the actual the ones with the, with the jaggery inside. Okay. The jaggery inside. We do make our own, but I'm not too sure about the festival and what people make. What do you normally make for Gauri Ganesha? Because I know the ladies are the ones that uh, enjoy this festival, right? I could be wrong. I mean, I, sorry, I, I don't have any knowledge about it, so I'm just asking. Anybody there to share? Hello? I didn't mute anyone. <laughs> Besan ka laddu. Okay, oh, fine. Okay. So, Besan ka laddu is made. Okay. I think by the end of the session, our mouths are all going to be watering. <laughs> what else do you do? Uh, Korakata. Korakata. Yes, that is very similar to the modak you're talking about. It's rice with the jaggery uh, oh, and coconut the, filling. I made the dry version, right? I have no idea. The one that you eat, I made it for you. The dry version. No, it has to be inside that uh, uh, steamed uh, coconut thingy. Uh, coconut modak, yes. Yes, I want that one. Well, <laughs> uh, bang, in, in South India, you don't really get that one. In Bombay and stuff, you get that one. I have no idea. Anyway. I want the big one. Uh, so mostly people, uh, people pure and poly. Oh, okay. So that's when I used to get it. As a little girl, I remember my neighbor would make it. I used to wait for this this time of the year, but I don't know when. Yes, yes. mostly uh, during the fifth day. Fifth day when Gauri uh, also arrives, no? So okay. they make uh, a number of dishes like at that time, pure. But uh, the celebration is low a little this time because of this mm. pandemic. So, but I yeah. think people have stopped eating. <laughs> I'm sure they're still making it. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people will be checking out the internet to make the best ones this time because you really don't want to venture out and get it from outside. Anyways, five mixed vegetables. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what would that be? You have a Navratan, so this must be... No, it's a, it must be Maharashtra. No? Okay, then. All right, people. So let's move on to our session now. Okay. So I'm just going to mute everyone, just to make it easier. Okay, so going on to chapter number 22. Um, I somehow thought we were in chapter 23 for some reason, but we are actually only in 22. So to talk about the etheric faculties, the faculty that we're going to start off here is basically the clairvoyant faculty. 
And so they, they mention here that the faculty is basically you and I trying to sense the, remember the physical plane has also the etheric plane in it, right? So try and feeling this particular plane and the world in that plane. And so the ability to be able to uh, tune into that, into that frequency and to be able to actually sense and feel this matter is what we're talking about. Uh, rather see, not really a sense. Sense is more pranic healing. So basically uh, the, the person is able to appreciate the vibrations, as they say here, pertaining to the etheric portion of the physical plane, right? And so uh, they say that uh, there, are, there is what you call the abnormal case, uh, cases where other parts are also used. Normally it is through the eye that one does uh, see or sense the etheric matter. They also say there are other ways in which you can. Other parts of the etheric body could, as long as that part has partial astral development. So if there's ast astral development uh, somewhere in that region, which becomes sensitive, it is usually corresponding to an astral uh, chakra or chakram around that same region. Yes? But they don't describe, I mean, the etheric body becomes an astral... Sorry? Mm. I don't know what you're asking. I think the specialization of the etheric body is to, to absorb and circulate energy. But the astral, but it can also have a secondary specialization as to feel also. So that's why they've written that. Because they've written that, uh, they, yeah. they've written that this would usually be due to partial development. Yeah. Development astral of what? Astral development. Partial astral development. Where? Of what? Of the etheric body? No, in that part of the etheric body, there's a partial development of the astral as well. So then allows them in that part to sense more. But our astral body developed already. So yeah, I but this is about 100 years old. So ah, maybe. To remember, they might be different in those days. All right. Maybe. So moving on. So they basically talk about two kinds of clairvoyance. They talk about the lower and the higher. Right now, in the lower clairvoyance, they basically talk about uh, the ability to be able to sense through the entire etheric or rather sense through the entire etheric matter, everything that is around. Uh, but it is uh, on a very, very low, low level. Yet at the same time, they say, uh, when you look at this, this kind of uh, ability has been there, and I presume it's still there in many parts of, they say, Central Africa. I would also say parts of America, especially South America probably even in tribal parts of even India and probably even China. So if you look at it uh, as man evolves, so at that point when man was not as evolved as he is today, both mentally and spiritually, they were able to sense uh, through the etheric matter all around them, right? The whole etheric matter they were able to sense. Now, um, when you look at this particular ability, right? The lower clairvoyance, this corresponds to the nervous disturbance in almost, and sorry, uh, nervous disturbance is almost entirely associated with what we call the uh, sympathetic, sympathetic uh, nervous system or sympathetic system. So you and I remember from the earlier class that they talk about the etheric double having this very close relationship to the nervous system, correct? So when it's the whole etheric body that they're through which they're able to sense, and of course, uh, the nervous system is also in all parts of the body, it primarily uses the uh, sympathetic, sympathetic uh, system, all right, nervous system. However, when they talk about the higher clairvoyance, uh, clairvoyance where you actually use a definite sense organ, right? It's not all over the body, but it's related to a specific organ. This they say happens and uh, happens to those who are now more evolved, not just mentally, but actually awakening their spiritual aspect, right? When they start to develop that aspect in their life, then this faculty, which was there when, when, when they were much less developed, slowly, slowly starts to get awakened. And that's why, if you notice, whenever we talk about clairvoyance, we talk about it as uh, being a latent tendency within us. Why? Because earlier in our uh, evolution, we did, uh, we did have this faculty, but it was more generic all over, right? Right now, it's becoming more clear, more focused. And this is associated with the cerebrospinal system, right? And so this is, very, uh, this is a different system that uh, is used at this point. And the uh, faculties is not something that you get straight away, right? It slowly unfolds. 
right? So as you become more evolved, they call it when the spiritual man begins to unfold, he regains clairvoyant power. And so uh, those of you who are pranic healers, if you've just been healing, you'll start to notice that your faculty starts to get awakened, right? When you start meditating regularly, suddenly the faculty starts getting awakened. So we all do have this latent tendency. How and when it gets awakened depends on what we go through, right? And so um, just to add at that point with reference to this, just, just a, a, a small thing, right? What happened to it? Yeah, so just, just the clairvoyance, the lower and the higher, are one uh, with reference to the sympathetic nervous system and the other, the cerebrospinal system. So these are the two faculties, one associated with more, uh, less evolved in the sense of the human race, and then the other as you evolve higher, not just in through the mental, sorry, but uh, to the, uh, into the other faculty, into the spiritual faculty as well. All right. So to move on, uh, we talk about the, the, the so-called lower, yes, the lower psychic uh, ability. They say that most frequently is associated with unintelligent humans and animals because uh, the hysterical and the ill-regulated psychism is due to the small development of the brain, right? And this, uh, and the dominance is basically the sympath sympathetic uh, system. And so keeping that in mind, that's why they, you're talking about the lower clairvoyance associated with this. However, in that case, that large uh, nucleated uh, ganglionic cell has more etheric matter and so allows them to then be aware of coarser astral vibration, right? And they're, they're able to then sense. Now, when you look at uh, people who are able to see, should I stop here or? Uh, yeah, okay. I can just summarize this because uh, this is again uh, quite vague. It's a good uh, thing. Now, the first line is a big hint because what they're saying is etheric faculties. What are etheric faculties? Etheric faculties are extensions of the ordinary physical senses. Um, so you've heard of the phrase as above, so below, and the principle of correspondence. So you have physical sight, but extending to the physical sight, there is a chakral condition. Uh, and through that, you can have clairvoyance or an extension of sight, but of other uh, matter, okay, not physical matter or grosser physical matter. Uh, in abnormal cases and all these things that they're talking about, um, that they're talking about here in the first page, I will just summarize it with just uh, just a line because it's just repeated examples and so many things. So basically, what they're trying to say is that you need two things if you want to be uh, if you want to have clairvoyance, lower, higher, whatever. The clairvoyance depends on two factors. Number one, it depends on the chakral condition. And number two, it depends on your psychological state. All these nervous systems and all that <laughs> correspond. We're only interested in the energy aspect. So it, it just depends on two things. We make it simple, the chakra conditions and the uh, psychological state. My question is, what is the chakra condition and what is the psychological state? I do not know if they're going to talk about that. But one thing they do mention here is that in the high clairvoyance, this time, however, the faculty is precise and exact under the control of the will and exercised through a sense organ. Now, the term will here is not really will, because if you use will, it is the opposite of clairvoyancy. And maybe we will talk about it later if we have time, because the thing is, uh, when you learned about the atomic web, and when you learned about or what we call the chakral web, right? They're going to talk about that, right? In the future soon? Are they talking about it? Anyway? Not yet. Not really. Not, With I don't the think drunkard's body, that. right? Um, <laughs> Um, should I talk about that then? All right. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about this chuckle web. When you use will, it is the opposite of clairvoyancy because will is focusing and clairvoyancy, you need sensitivity, right? You need sensitivity, which has to do with a, another chakra. It doesn't have to do with the will. So the word will here is you is used in terms of intention, intention. 
and the intention is used as a power source to power up whatever faculty that you're using to see or to I don't know, hear or smell or whatever. You see, you have a chakra, you need a power source and that power source comes through the principle of directability, which is your intention. I'm sorry, I'm talking in uh, a little bit of, if you've, done higher, uh, if you've done higher clairvoyance, you will know what I'm talking about, uh, but I cannot reveal uh, certain uh, techniques on, on this forum. So that's basically it. So what they're summarizing, just to be clear, and we'll come back to the chakral uh, and why, why it cannot be willed, that we can explain. Let's just finish that uh, part that Sumi is going to talk about and then I'll explain that, okay? Um, but basically you need chakral condition, psychological state. Whether it's positive psychological, crazy psychological, all that affects your clairvoyancy. It makes it either good or bad or so-so. And uh, whether it works or not, all that affects the clairvoyancy and your chakral condition. So you need a certain optimum chakral condition to see energy to have uh, extended, extended uh, extension of your ordinary physical sense. Okay, you can go ahead, then I'll talk about this. Right, so uh, basically what we're saying is, normally you can only see what is physical, but you're going to go into layers, uh, right into the etheric and can see much more. Uh, and in the etheric, it's not just what you can see uh, both on the outside, but also inside and also the beings that exist in that so-called uh, sphere of uh, the etheric world, yeah? So Dr. Sagar mentions that the sympathetic uh, system is two beaded chain in, in the body and have uh, ganglionic, is that how you say it? Ganglionic? Ganglionic. Ganglionic? Like the ganglion. Uh, ganglionic uh, cells. It is related to the preparation of the body for fear, fight and flight. And so I think that's how uh, early man survived, <laughs> right? On, on the earth, uh, no matter where we were, that's how we all survived. And probably the sense, you had to sense everything around, uh, whether it's animals around, uh, whether it was the temperature around, you had to have a greater sense all around and maybe uh, partially also clairvoyant. All right, uh, so to move on uh, from these two uh, aspects, going into the etheric vision now. So when we talk about the etheric vision, they say it may be temporarily stimulated, right? Now this can be stimulated. Now, for example, if a person uh, has an issue with say alcoholism, right? The alcoholic, they're addicted to alcohol and uh, not that you're just having a social drink somewhere. These people, when they have these deliriums, uh, when they have sometimes even tremors after they, they finish drinking, sometimes what happens, they suffer and they may actually see into the etheric world. Because at that point, the atomic web or the etheric web that we talk about is actually then opened. And I understand uh, from what Amit said, I think he mentioned it here, I'm not sure. But he says when a person drinks, it's almost like <coughs> their will, which means their agnya, is not fully functional in the sense that you know what you're doing, but you can't kind of stop yourself from doing what, what, what is happening. So I believe that's what happens. I have no clue. That's not become small when you're... Yeah, yeah, no, the, I'm talking about the will as, as uh, well yeah. with that, right? Yeah. So what happens anyway? The point is uh, it opens up their sight, which means the agne is related to the eyes. And so the agne probably is also opened at this point for them to actually see. Now they see, yes, etheric as well as astral creatures. And so that's why they see sometimes very ugly creatures depending on who they are and how they've developed. They see snakes, they say here and other horror scenes uh, in such case, cases, uh, usually creatures of low type, right? You see, the point is that these beings that they see actually enjoy the, as they call it here, the fumes of alcohol that exudes from that person. So what you emanate at that point is the, a certain type of energy because of the alcohol you've consumed and you actually add, attract these beings around. And then if that point, your atomic web is actually opened, then you see all of them. And they're not the most pleasant ones to see, right? And so uh, they, they might tell you, oh my God, I can see this and that. And you're like, what's wrong with you? You're just drunk. Yes, they are drunk. But because of that, temporarily, the clairvoyance is stimulated in their case. And so they say, it should be noted that the etheric double is uh, peculiarly susceptible to the volatile uh, constitutes of alcohol. Not sure why, but it does. That's what they say, right? Now, this clairvoyant faculty may also sometimes be 
may also be enhanced uh, during the healing process. Here, especially under the influence of uh, mesmerism. So they say that uh, this can be another way, along with uh, people who increasingly tense their nerves. I'm not sure how you do that, but anyway, increase uh, tenseness of nerves caused by either hysteria, caused by excitement, ill health, sometimes even the drugs you take. You know, when, when you're really, really uh, unwell and they give you a lot of uh, drugs, I understand you start to see things around. So temporarily, again, through drugs, sometimes very bad health, you, you might just see. Or certain uh, ceremonial rites, which induce self-hypnotism. And so through this process, sometimes people have been able to see. However, they do not advise that one goes through mesmerism uh, to actually help open up their clairvoyant faculty. Because at that point, the will is not in the hands of the person who's being mesmerized, but rather the person who's mesmerizing you. And so if you start giving the will uh, to direct how your system is supposed to work to others, then you become an easy prey for others to use their will to direct you to do what they want, right? So it's, it's not a good thing to even start at any point. I don't think any of us want to, but it's just a warning given here. Now, in case you are lucky and you are friends with nature spirits, yes? Now, these beings are usually very shy. Uh, they are not very pro-human. <laughs> I think maybe because of all the experiences they probably had with us in the past. They can actually help also open up your clairvoyance temporarily, right? So these uh, little nature beings, they can actually help you uh, help you open up your clairvoyance. Now, that means you need to become friends with them. That friendship should be good enough. However, you need to remember that uh, the nature spirits like certain energies and do not like certain energies, yeah? So I just pulled out one image of that uh, just to show you. Um, just out of Google, but uh, anyway, oh, sorry. Yes, so that's like a, like a being there. And so these nature spirits can temporarily open your clairvoyant faculty. However, what they do not like first, and then we'll talk about what they like. They do not like uh, people who physically emanate certain types of energy. So they say when an average man eats, for example, a lot of meat, uh, consumes tobacco or alcohol, or even has, not just physically, but also uh, as a person, they're selfish, uh, there are uh, emotions of lust, anger, and depression. These nature beings run away from these kind of people and the energies that they emanate. However, they like the energies of those um, who have a strong, unselfish feeling of a lofty nature. This creates a kind of at atmosphere that actually uh, attracts them there and they love to you know sit around there so wh whether you're doing like uh, erratic meditations together with master Chua, there are a lot of beings around unless right? you're because, expelling a lot yeah uh, if you're you expelling incense yes and that's, <laughs> yeah that's why you put a lot of incense in the room to to release that kind of emanation because we all do expel as well during meditations right and so um that that is supposed to be something that we do regularly so i've noticed in the hindu tradition in the jewish tradition in the christian tradition in the islamic tradition when you pray also you cleanse the place right whether you're using frankincense you're using south india sambrani whether you're using a sandalwood incense or agarbati there are different ways in which you try to do this to cleanse the place and you continue to do that and it continues to burn even through the prayer right so tomorrow notice that even when you're praying, the incense is, is still lit, correct? So that's basically uh, what happens. So that is to expel the energies that are not uh, conducive for these nature beings to be attracted and come closer to you and I, right? And so these beings start to come. And another thing that uh, they enjoy besides this, uh, the emotions that we were talking about, uh, is that they also love music. And so a specific type of music is what... Uh, Bishop C.W. Ledbetter also noticed, and he says that, uh, he writes actually, he says that uh, in Sicily, in Italy, he sees this shepherd boy playing a homemade panpipe, and as he continues to play that beautiful music, he says he's not aware, he's blissfully unaware or unconscious of the fact that there are these fairies frisking around him, <laughs> probably dancing to the music and enjoying it. Uh, and Again, today's language frisking means something else. <laughs> 
and those Actually, days is something else. <laughs> with COVID, it might be very different frisking the, the anymore. Blonde, uh, and by the way, the nature spirit is not blonde and uh, doesn't have eyes. Beautiful and, and yes, all that. that. No, but there are human forms. So you guys will imagine now these things frisking you. Uh, anyway. Okay, fine. They're very tiny. Anyways, <laughs> so there are these little things that are that are going around. And uh, there are a lot of uh, farmers and peasants that have also seen these nature beings. And, and so whether you've w watched uh, different movies, right, especially from Europe and other places, you'll find that they talk about this, whether it's Lord of the Rings or any of those movies that you watched. Uh, a, a lot of these, uh, what's, what's the Japanese gentleman that I like? What today? Who has those series that I keep watching, those movies. Ah, Studio Ghibli. Yeah, Studio Ghibli again. You'll Totoro. notice that uh, there are Totoro or Studio Ghibli. Is, uh, it, it's also on Netflix. Totoro. There are a lot of these animated, uh, amazing uh, stories that he writes. And there are a lot of these beings that uh, he kind of... Um, our characters, our main characters also in the, in the story. Anyways, uh, to go about it, they love music and uh, they enjoy this. And so that's why you have all these stories uh, where they actually still talk. And, and these are called folklores uh, about beings that exist uh, in nature, in and around them, whether it's in the forest, the woods, uh, in the farms, uh, in the sea. So they, they actually seen it and, and they talk about it in, in, in different forms. All right. And. Um, OK, so I'll give that to you and then I'll move on. OK. So to talk about this will and talk about all whatever it is, I'm going to just summarize all of this because by now I've understood uh, to a certain extent we've been reading uh, Mr. Powell for a while and so we'll just summarize in a few words otherwise it becomes really long. Um, so we already summarized what uh, conditions you need for clairvoyance. Either it becomes good, either it becomes bad. Now, uh, if you can see me, uh, do me a favor, just close your eyes. Can you see anything? No, right? You cannot. Open your eyes. Can you see? Yes, you can. Why couldn't you see when your eyes were closed? Because of your eyelids, right? So the eyelids prevent you from seeing. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be dramatic. Right? Sometimes the you have to be just so simple. The, the eyelids prevent you from seeing, right? Because they are closed, right? The eyelids. Now your chakras also have certain eyelids. Not really eyelids, but lids. And they're called protective web. Okay, they're also etheric, but they're called protective because their function is to protect. Okay, their function is to protect. Um, now, uh, what do they protect you from? We have already discussed about elementals. We've already discussed about all these things um, in that, right? Now, we also discussed, remember the chapter on the atomic web, the protective web, that the, uh, the, the chakras, especially the solar plexus and certain other chakras of drug addicts, people who are alcoholics, um, really addicted to smoking and certain other things, their protective webs have cracks and holes through which the elementals come, come in, right? Because of the cracks, anyone can go in and say hello, all right? So, uh, so that's the problem. Now, unfortunately, there's a law which we have spoken about several times uh, called in the, in, in, not, not in uh, pranic healing, but in spirituality called like attracts like. You know, and even in general, you know, there's a phrase, tell me who you are, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are, something, something like that. So basically, you know, people who like to play golf, they start to hang out with people who like to play golf. Uh, people who like to dance, uh, they hang out with other dancers and, you know, it's just so on and so forth. So uh, unfortunately, since um, the energy of these drug addicts, many of them, they, they're not very clean or many of the severe alcoholics, they're not very clean uh, since they're not clean they attract negative energy beings not only elementals but negative beings all right and that's why uh, some of the drug addicts uh, they look at themselves and they start to see the ugly creature on their body okay because of the hole they can see through the so there's uh, the eyelid is sort of open but has holes in it um, so, so they can see these ugly creature on the body and they try and pull it out and in the process of pulling it out they pull their skin out Okay, but the elemental is still there, although they pull their skin out. And the doctor would say they're just hallucinating. All right, uh, but it comes from damaged protective web. All right, um, now sometimes um, these drug addicts who have damaged protective web, they would also say that's not covered in the book. They've said about the snakes and the you know things on their body. Um, 
but some of the damage protective web, they would say that, uh, you know, they would do something uh, bad and they say, I didn't do it. You know, this person did it. They told me to do it. All right. So uh, now why are we discussing all of this? The protective web, as we discussed in detail in chapter, earlier chapter, uh, it's to protect you. It's to protect you. But unfortunately, it cannot know or gauge whether the intrusion or the attack is happening from outside or from inside. All right. So whether there's an external force or an internal force, it cannot gauge that. So the moment it experiences some force, uh, it tightens and hardens, right? And solidifies. Uh, so if you use, well, like they say, will, right? You'll not be able to see anything because the, the protective web becomes too tight, becomes too hard. Because will is using power and power is uh, a force. So the, although it's coming from inside, the protective web cannot... Uh, gauge where the intruder is coming from it thinks it's an intrusion so it becomes tight so definitely it cannot be will it's probably intention a, a light gentle attention intention on a specific uh like they said on a specific sense organ which is etheric in nature which we cannot talk about which i Sorry, by mistake I, I, about. I thought master Je uh, i don't know if it's master or the book says that you need to use gentle will to open up the web to see clairvoyant no not gentle will Gentle will is like not, not gentle very, will. You, you almost meditate you, because, okay, to see clairvoyantly, one of the secrets is you need the heart. The one of the psychological states. Remember, I told you there are two beings. Sorry, so, you can open it at will and close it. Yeah, like, wrong word. That is intention. Yeah, yeah in so, way. so that so, would be the way maybe they're using both. That's what they're talking about intention, directability. Gentle will is. Another word is directability, to direct your attention very gently on the part, but not use will. Will is a completely different word today. You know, your willpower, I'll, God, you know, that, that's not the way you have to address the web. Gentle will is okay. Intention is okay. Uh, but you have to use more heart. It's almost like meditating when you're looking. You're just looking at watching TV. You know, when you watch TV, you don't like, I'm watching TV. You just watch TV. You know, relax. You just, yeah. you know, you're not... So it's, um, you just intend to watch, when you're looking at the screen, you intend to look at it and you look at it, that's it, right? So that's how, uh, how it works. The heart, the energy of the heart is required um, because even if you don't have the energy of the heart, there's no way you can be a good clairvoyant. Uh, is, there's no way, uh, because the heart, how do I explain this without revealing anything? It's like the chemical, you know, you have photography before, you have uh, the process, and uh, you have to, to put the image on the film. You use a certain chemical, I think, right? To, yeah. to, re to register on the film. So that chemical corresponds to the energy of the heart. Without the energy of the heart, the brain will not register the image. So just like in photography, where you need a certain chemical to register the um, image on the plate or on the film, you need the energy of the heart to register it in your brain and for it to process. That's why some of the good clairvoyants, some clairvoyants, they, after they have a heart attack, they can't see any energy anymore. They don't, they're no longer clairvoyant. We observed that with Master Chua. I mean, not with him, but yeah, he, he told us about it. He observed it. He observed it and told us. <laughs> I didn't observe it. So anyway, what else? So I've explained all the snakes and then the clairvoyants. The snake, they, they want to know, is it an elemental that they're actually seeing? Oh, uh, yeah. I just said that they remove it. They just try and pull it out. You see, because this seeing it is not physical. You can't pull it out, but they're pulling the skin out because it's just not coming out. And they don't know what energy is. So their energy is, so it's because of like attract like, unfortunately. Now using the principle of like attract like, you also say, now if you have good energy, good thought forms, good deeds, good actions, you're projecting lots of love. They love, their nature spirits, they love the energy of uh, happiness, of love. So you, I would, I've not experimented, but I would not think that, um, say, if you play maybe Linkin Park or rock music, uh, I don't know how that would work with attracting uh, nature spirits. But, uh, you know, if you play certain classical music, you know, energy that, you know, certain music activates certain centers, right? So not the music, if you remember the 90s, they had MTV, the grind and all those type of things, you know, not that type of music because that will attract other beings. And that is maybe for a different time. But if you want to attract the ones that activate the clairvoyance, um, then you need to have uh, the energy of love. Again, because of the energy of love, they attracted, that is required for clairvoyance. So again, it's implying that you need uh, strong, unselfish feelings. Strong, unselfish feeling in simple English is love. 
love and kindness, right? Yeah, selfless. Selfless. So, so I don't know why they didn't say that. Maybe it's, uh, you know, sometimes they veil the teachings. So if you just read strong, selfish feelings, it might not register that you need the energy of love. You need the energy of uh, loving kindness. All right. Um, and obviously a person who's having a lot of meat, the energy body is grosser. Uh, there's tobacco, there's alcohol. The energy is emanating, is not conducive. So they'll attract certain other beings. So, you know, in the, in, in, in the inner world, we attract a lot of beings. Just like, you know, it's not really like this, but you know how a rhino will just sit there and graze and then these birds come and pick stuff on them. And you know, the, so the body of a rhino is like, uh, you know, certain parts of the body of the rhino is like food. You know, you see the fish, they go close and they pick this and they clean this. Uh, so the elementals, everything in the inner world, uh, you know, whatever you emit, you attract certain beings. So it based on the principle of like is, is like. So if you have a golden body, for example, you have, you practice a lot of twin arts, your heart is highly developed and there's energy coming out. You have a lot of um, golden chi energy, uh, those kind of things. Then you attract really more, uh, you know, nature spirits and they love to bathe and feed and all that kind of energy. Just like people like to do it also, right? Certain kinds of people. So that is there. And then, uh, no, it's not advisable to allow oneself to be thrown into mesmeric sleep because that, you see, in order to do that, you need to really make your ajna very small. And if you do it repeatedly over and over again, of course, it's going to become, it's going to make the will of your, uh, it's going to make your will uh, center smaller. You don't want your CEO going on vacation. Anyone can take over the company, right? So you need the CEO or the upper management to protect you. You know, the workers are good, but the workers cannot do much from a hostile takeover. It's the management who has to take care of it. All right. Now they're fond of um, uh, melodies, those kind of things. You can even project pinkish energy, pinkish gold. They love that kind of stuff as far as I've heard. Um, yeah. So that's it. Then you can look at the methods of activating the twin. Yeah. So uh, when Any Master Cho... Yes, you can answer that if you want to go the hallucination. So these visions or hallucinations or, 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 or someone who has stone webs or anger... Um, it depends now. Ah, and also, why do they see snakes? You have to understand the same person looking at someone, uh, a person who is using um, the, what is it? The, the s mental faculties are developed. What do they call them? The higher clairvoyant or whatever? What do they, they don't have in developed race, you can say. Both people look at the same thing. They see completely different things because you have multiple energies coexisting in the same space. Multiple realities. You see, you turn on your, uh, you know, you have your TV, but within that space coexist multiple realities. You have multiple one space, channels. multiple channels, channels, multiple realities. You have one air, you, you, you know, you have, for example, um, FM, and then you have uh, different, uh, you know, what do you call radio stations. So depending on what your antenna quality is and everything and you can tune into the station that you want so within that same space coexist multiple stations so when someone sees but then the same developer person sees he'll not see the snakes and creatures of course some people have elementals some people have you know it's like saying you have bacteria in your body of course so some people have elementals but they might tune in and they want to see another aspect they'll see that Okay, so they have the intention. That's why the will is being used. They have an intention to see what they want to see and at what level they want to see. Otherwise, you know, you have everything into all the energies interpenetrating one another. You need to tune into the right frequency to match and see what you want to see, right? I hope I didn't confuse you. I cannot talk more than this. That's it. I cannot, you know, it's parable. All right, so um, let's go on. Oh, yes, I was going to share. Yeah. Uh, when Master Cho would take us to uh, hotels in, in Manila, he would take us to the Shangri-La Hotel, which would be opposite uh, where we were. And uh, he would actually order um, sometimes ice cream and stuff for us. Alo, alo. Alo, alo. Okay. I mean, that's like an ice cream with ice in it and some fruits. Huh? There's so much <laughs> stuff in there. How I, can you do that to the alo, alo? There's ube ice cream. I don't eat there's, the alo, alo. There's I just cream give it to caramel. everyone else. Right. There's flan. There's ice. There's <laughs> coconut milk. There, oh my God. She okay. made it into a fruit salad. So, so yeah, it's like a fruit salad, Jimmy, with lots of ice, which I will not eat. Anyways, uh, so the point was, uh, the hotel is a very prosperous hotel, the times that he would take us. And so he would say, you know, there's a lot of prosperity beings here. And uh, he'd say, just close your eyes and send them loving energy. But no one asked them, why are there a lot of prosperity beings here? 
as far as I know. Now, the reason that I think based on other conversations, why there are prosperity beings there is because like attracts like. You have a prosperous hotel, it emits a set of energy, that uh, being comes there, basks in that energy, but okay. because of that being, the hotel becomes even more prosperous, and then that being also eats. It's like the, uh, like the deal between the drug addict and the uh, elemental, but in a good way, you know? <laughs> but in, you know, the drug addict always wants more drugs and always tries to get it, but y you don't want drugs, you want prosperity energy, so you have prosperity yeah. beings. So if you do go through a prosperous uh, part of town, a prosperous city, a prosperous hotel, you could do that. Just bless the beings that are around. They enjoy it, they love it, and they come near you as well. So hopefully, uh, they'll infuse some energy into yours. So something there for you to do when you go out of course. Also, the energy the of the hotel has consciousness after a certain point. So then that also, to a certain extent, to a certain extent, and yeah. the people inside and all that stuff. Yeah. So today with all the hotels and their business, I'm not too sure about what's happening. But anyways, you can also do it with prosperous places. So let's move on. Uh, so now we're going to try and see, is there a method in which you and I can enhance our etheric sight? And so what they say is they start off with the technique of imagination, right? So what they're utilizing is the technique of imagination. And so you have to imagine what is inside, yes, a physical object. And so they talk about a box, a closed box, something is placed inside, and you have to try and guess what is inside. Imagine what is inside. And so they say you keep trying over and over again. Uh, through all the trials, maybe you uh, get it wrong. But as you keep practicing, they say, as you continue to practice on a regular basis, slowly, uh, they say after many attempts, it is said that the guessing becomes more frequently correct. And uh, as you persist with this practice, um, they say it is said that this practice is was something that was followed by the Zuni tribe of the American Red Indians. And uh, with that, they are probably able to then actually tell you what's inside, uh, the, inside the box, right? They don't have to imagine, they can actually see through. And so the practice uh, starts to become effective. And so they say uh, the theory of probability would demand, and presently the, the man begins actually to see ethically that which is at first what he only imagined right so it starts to change he only could imagine it but after some time he can actually see through that and so what they say is that whole box becomes like misty and they can actually see inside the box uh, they give you another uh, example see they, they say great number of people if they will take the trouble to look under uh, suitable conditions of light right they can actually see the mesmeric fluid so this is another way in which you can see the nerve ether and uh, it could, and they say that uh, the, the Baron here, uh, Baron uh, Reichenbach. 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 Okay, fine. Uh, so he could actually see it uh, coming out of the hands of people. And then he found almost 60 people who were also able to see these emanations, not just from people probably, but also they could see uh, things coming out of magnets, crystals, copper wires, yes. Um, uh, what they do is one end of which is exposed to sunlight and then the observer is placed in a dark room for a while to make their eyes sensitive when they come out and look and they can actually see. So if you look at it, interestingly, it's a magnet, the crystal, the copper wire. It reminds me of Dr. Kilner's experiments. <laughs> yeah, he had the magnet, the poles, he had that crystal. And of, 60 people. <laughs> oh, he also had 60 people. Yeah. I don't know how many people he had anyway. Until so, they got 60 people or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's another one that we have. And then they talk about this French scientist uh, with reference to the end rays. Now, when I look at Google today, uh, they say that <laughs> they've actually nullified this end rays. They say it's just illusionary. So I'm not too sure if it's actually there. It's part of hypnotic uh, state. So I'm not sure if, if it makes sense. Anyway. But the point they're talking about is there is certain emanations coming, which they call end rays, from both uh, anything that is alive, right? So they're talking about humans and animals. But they say, as soon as you put chloroform on that part, the emanations stop. And they say it's definitely not coming out of any uh, dead body. So the corpse, when you see, there's nothing coming out of it. So there could probably be this. And they also uh, mention here anesthesia when they use chloroform. They say, uh, expels etheric matter from the physical body yes 
and uh, that's the course preventing the emanation of the rays again. So they talk about even, uh, so you have basically the corpse, so you talk about chloroform with reference to just any part of the body, and then of course, uh, specifically with reference to anesthesia, right? So I'm, I'm, I won't go into the end rays, but just that part which, which I thought was important. Then they say that uh, when you have full control, right, of the abilities to use um, your etheric vision, um, then you can actually do it whenever you want. You, you can open it up, like I said, at will to, to look, and then you can close it, you can shut it. So they say that you can actually see through physical matter. This is the brick wall that I'm talking about and that, that light mist. So they say the consistency then of that red brick becomes like light mist. And then you can actually see through uh, the, uh, the closed box or you can see through a sealed letter or you can even go to a chapter or something that you're looking for in a book and actually find it. Or also, uh, I'm sure through the wall, you can see into the room and what and who is there. When the faculty is fully, uh, oh, sorry, perfectly developed, it is completely under the control and may be used or not used at will. Yes, yeah, so that's basically what I was talking about. And uh, it is said uh, to be easy to change from ordinary to etheric vision for people like this just by the focusing or maybe defocusing of their eye. That's as simple as it gets at the end once you've awakened it. Uh, the change being in reality, a focus of consciousness. Yes, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, love energy or sensitive energy is required at this point. So okay. I'll move on. No, I, Sorry, you move on and then I'll move on later. Um, Where were we? One method of developing etheric sight is by utilizing the imagination. But they have not described the proce procedure of the imagination on. And um, they've just, called it the imagination. So an endeavor is made to imagine what's inside, but they've not described the, the technique, right? So, I mean. The process is not really. Imagine this. I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not. And you know, I, I think it's I think there's a technique, but they're not described that. Um, and would it be like to guess? Okay, all that stuff. Maybe it's training the brain to register the frequency because if you keep trying to look at the aura over and over again, over and over again, you're um, you're you know with with looking, you're directing your attention there, and your brain. And so when you look at something, the energy comes back to you. So then the the brain gets more sensitized to the vibrations or the frequency of that matter and then your brain starts to get sensitized and it's just like you know it starts to recognize that when the frequency is in this um structure it's a pen when the frequency is in this structure it's a pencil you know if you if you show me this and i try and look clairvoyant at it and then you say i can't see anything what is it oh it's a pencil then you do it 10 20 30 40 times every time i'm trying to look it looks there and then when i actually know what it is the correlation is happening between what is the actual one and what is the uh, etheric structural content of that one. You know, I hope you know. <laughs> so, um, so basically, as you keep practicing, first you do pencil, then you do pen, then you do this, then you do, uh, I don't know, you do other things. Um, and then you start to uh, be able to recognize certain patterns. Your brain will automatically process it in a certain way and show you the image of what it is. But you're not really seeing that image. I mean, the image is like, it's like a, what do they call it? It's probability. <laughs> so, so the brain is seen, okay, the, you, look, you try, okay, I want to see the energy of this. The energy comes to your brain, your brain interprets it, and the brain knows from experience, and because it has, and the chakras from consciousness, because it has a consciousness, it can remember uh, that certain, you know, just like muscle memory, you know, uh, it can remember, okay, this certain, uh, oh, the vibrations are like this, so it must be, um, you know, a pencil, okay? That's what I assume is the mechanism behind the technique. But the procedure of the technique, we do not know yet. And it is said that this practice, I'll try and find this magazine. I don't think it's, uh, <laughs> it's 100 years old. So I don't know whether service magazine is still in print. We'll have to check and rely and see, and then we see what is, if they've relieved the technique there. Um, okay, so. A uh, great number of people, if they will take the trouble to look under suitable light. Why do they have to take trouble to look? What is with these words that they're using? I don't understand. 
um, is it troubling to look under certain light conditions, under As suitable conditions of light? Trouble to look. They take they they actually effort are, yeah, effort. So the trouble is you're going to effort. So that's why consistent. you have to really no see psychologically it <laughs> it uh, for me at least because I analyze words differently. It it I'm, it doesn't make it's like a it's like a program error. <laughs> trouble to look. <laughs> Okay. So, my computer okay. guy. Effort, effort to look under suitable light, or if they take the, yeah. Would you like to take the trouble to pass me the fork, please? Yeah. Oh, okay. You should so, talk like that. Yeah. That we we should try talking like that. No trouble at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, now, uh, under suitable conditions of light, again, what are the suitable conditions of light? And they have explained later on, if you, not exactly, but they've hinted it over and over again, so you can safely assume that is a suitable condition of light. So under suitable uh, conditions of light, uh, you can see the mesmeric fluid or the aura or the energy. The nerve ether, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this guy saw all of the energy. Now the observers, now what were the suitable conditions of light? The observers was usually shut up. My God, that also means something else. <laughs> Gagged and kept. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't use any sense except your eye, and then you'll see. Okay, so the uh, you, uh, observers were usually shut up in a dark room for some hours in order to make they were the retina more in a sensitive. Dark room. But they have not explained were the observers shut in the dark room before or after observation. Before observation, and they have not mentioned that. Okay, fine. I assume it. They yeah, so it's assumed. Event. Obviously, it's more. Okay, because they say that the next paragraph, um, who could normally see N rays, became be, became became able to do so after sitting in darkness. So now it's hinted. So in the next paragraph, hints the previous paragraph. The next next paragraph hints the pre previous paragraph. So you know that the the quality of light affects clairvoyance. Yeah. Okay, now uh, when Master Cho was asked, when was the best time to look? And if you notice that all these seances, and if you notice all these uh, tarot card readings, especially if the you know to set the mood, maybe all these crystal ball reading, uh, and all these you know forecasting and clairvoyancy things are always in this nice dimly lit uh, space with uh, with certain incense to attract those nature spirits, certain music playing in the background to attract the nature spirits, and then certain um, uh, it's it's quite dimly lit, almost depressing environment, um, right? Um, now the question is why why is brightness affecting clairvoyance and why is uh, a dimly lit uh, affecting clairvoyance? They have not uh, spoken about that here, but uh, but the answer is this. Did they answer? Anyway, so. Uh, because when it's really bright, what happens to the eyes? The eyes become highly stimulated, right? And so the ajna becomes big, right? Or the agnya becomes big. And uh, when the light is dim, there is less stimulation on the physical eyes. So the agnya becomes small. Now when the agnya becomes big, there is too much wind and therefore it's not a conducive environment to see conducive psychological environment to see. When the ajna is smaller, and then the, uh, then it, it, and the other chakras that you use for clairvoyance are bigger, then it's a more conducive environment to see. So it's a science. There's a specific reason behind it. They have not revealed the reason. We have given you the reason uh, based on our experience, okay? It's just what affects the eyes will affect the chakra through which you see and also the ajna chakra and the ajna chakra. Okay, now, uh, we may here note that the end rays are due to vibrations in the etheric double causing waves. My God, what is this? Student will recollect animal, blood, metal, more like, which is under... You know what I didn't understand earlier that I didn't talk about? What is this thing about animals and very unintelligent human beings in psychism? How do they know that the animals are psychic? Or they can see, right? They can huh? see and sense things. Ah, how do they know? I don't know. The cat can, the dog can. That is true. <laughs> but so they, they have, have some kind of, they have some faculties which um, we don't know. Oh, I don't know. Or I'm can sure. they talk to the animal or they can see the animals? So okay, coming back with this N rays, once again, I think the and I think the rays are just energy. Look, they're using rays as a you know, because this is a long time ago. 
So, um, but all alike under in the sense of chronology exists. So, so basically, you can see energy when you sit in a dark room for some time. And you have to understand, in those days, people were not as willful as today. Today, it's more difficult. If you sit in a dark room for a few hours, <laughs> and then you go and see, it's more difficult. Uh, it's not as easy to see. I have tried this um, uh, many times when I used to practice. <laughs> so it did not work. Okay, why? Because today's job, uh, a lot of the uh, work we do today, uh, it, re it requires will. Uh, you know, like you have deadlines, you have targets, you have, you know, you're continuously using your will. So your Ajna is big. It's not really a conducive environment compared to 200 years ago, 100 years ago, or whenever this 19th century, uh, what they're talking about, this guy, in the middle of the 19th century. I mean, they didn't have, I mean, they did, but, you know, it's much more relaxed. They were more in tune with nature in those days, I think. I, I, you know, they didn't have the electronics we do today. Um, so the student will recollect so all that. Now, I don't know. So they can see the energy, but for some reason, when you use chloroform, you see there's a detachment, remember, of the etheric body and also the energy, circulation of energy, because chloroform affects certain chakras, the circulation of energy is reduced. And because the circle of energy is reduced, for them, they, they cannot see it, so they say it's gone. It's not really gone, it's probably reduced. If all the energy is gone, the person will be, like the next paragraph, a corpse. Okay, so it is reduced in flow. So their equipment is with the amount of training just for sitting a few hours and this type of training will not be able to detect uh, that type of um, low circulation. So then they presume that it's disappeared. Okay, and full and controlled possession of this etheric site enables a man to see through matter like Superman, except lead, even lead. I don't know what Superman does. I don't know. So a brick wall, right? So the contents of a closed box could be, uh, you have, you know, accurately described and seal letters. So you can read letters. Uh, and can you see through clothes and stuff also? You can see through the body. Oh. But I don't think you want to see through the clothes. But the next paragraph does You can't. It's just hazy. Yeah. Uh, but you can see the bones. You can see the muscles. You can see the tendons. You can zoom into even, you can, it's like zooming in and zooming out on Google Maps. You know, you can zoom, 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 and you can zoom in uh, even to the, even the to the, uh, that's affected. yeah, the bone and the energy of the bone and inside the bone and everything, organs and everything. Okay. But you can find a passage in a book. So technically you can teach this to your kids and they can cheat an exam. No, you can just like clairvoyantly see what everyone else is doing. And all the <laughs> you know, that's why it was not, <laughs> people who think like this, it doesn't come to them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I would never have thought of that. Why is this an exam? You know, you can see a passage here, a passage there. Well, let me just verify my work and see if it's correct. <laughs> so that's why character building is required before you get these uh, faculties. Sites, faculties, right? I think we should end. I think that's where you ended, right? Yeah, I did end. All right. Yay, we did All right so we did work. We did three. Yeah, now. we uh, we done more or less with this. Uh, ah. <laughs> I did that twice yesterday in my UM session. Just come here. Ah, like that. Okay, fine. Okay, so uh, one, uh, Deepa, we're not too, <laughs> Deepa, we're not too sure whether those those uh, two beaded things are going to do with Ida and Pengla. Uh, probably not. Um, they're just the way yeah. the energy is. So that's usually the DNA that they say looks similar. Uh, whereas the Ida Pengla is more on the energy level. And um, Dr. Sagar, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but the... Yes, he's, he's okay. Fine. He's saying yes. All right. Fine. Visual Thank you. Visual can also be used for opening of clairvoyance. Yeah, it can be used for opening of clairvoyance. Yes, yeah, so you can use imagination or visualization. But how do you use it? That's yeah. the, cool. but the technique's but not given, technique. but you can try. Yeah. You it's, can't say, I, I am a clairvoyant and I'm now seeing and then you see that's not work. You have to create the science. You have to create the specific chuckle condition, the specific psychological state. You have to have the right power source. You have to have the right, uh, you know, monitor to you, just to see is not enough. You need a viewing device also, right? You need a 4K viewer <laughs> screen. So all that comes into the picture. All right, yeah, so, power Susan, I, I'm not sure if there's any kind of course. Uh, Where they can read with blindfolds? Ah, yeah, I think the, I've heard of this. But I don't know any, any course um, here right now that people do. They, they might be outside. Do you know anything in India? or in I've not Myanmar? looked into it. My kid can barely read without a blindfold. <laughs> so I'm like having a tough time here. So with a blindfold, I'm not training now. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> so... Um, Okay, 
Your knees is ah. done and I saw her read. Wow. Ooh. Amazing. So the blindfold is basically the darkness and then she can actually... So then the women can see what the husband is texting and how they text him. <laughs> when, you see this guy been texting when she grows older, day. hopefully she's a little <laughs> just kid joking. right now. Yeah, it's just a joke. <laughs> okay, so they are saying there are... Uh, uh, they say there are courses in India to see... Uh, through a blindfold. Um, I have explained this, by the way, how they see with the blindfold. I explained that technique already with the part on astral body. Okay. I have explained it, if you can go back to that chapter. But I've not given the technique, but yeah. If you uh, guys remember. Victor says yes. All right, so that's about it. I think we've answered all your questions. We're at the end. So let's close it's the session. It's Friday night. Yes, Friday night. It's festival time here in India. Uh, though it's still low key, but it's still festival time. So let's close our eyes to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokakshi Lord Maha Guruji Mehu, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, healing ministers, healing angels, to all the invisible helpers, to the great teachers and masters of theosophy, to the angels and beings of knowledge, wisdom, and power, to the great uh, nature spirits and angels of communication, of our respective Wi-Fi connections and the internet. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for the greater clarity and understanding of these great, great, amazing teachings. We ask you to help us to absorb and assimilate them to become better divine, divine instruments in your service. With thanks and then for it. So be it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Atma Namaste, everybody. So, uh, hold on. There's, can improper Kundalini awakening damage the protective web and make a person see beings? Definitely, that is called ESP syndrome. <laughs> yeah, and so that's why we uh, we use that blue to try. And but help. not really crack. Huh? It might overstimulate and might activate the clairvoyancy. Also. Yes, so you need not to necessarily just... there are cracks. It's just uh, premature awakening. Correct, and so then you just need to inhibit and close it for the time being, so then the person can still continue with their normal life. Most of them can't handle it when it suddenly happens. Yeah? It, it doesn't happen if it's done in a proper manner. Like if you're over, uh, you know, it won't crack. Uh, it's only like if you're smoking a lot and your back heart is congested because the smoking, you know, it uses the lungs to you use your lungs to smoke. Co co you know, correspondingly, the back heart gets really blocked. So the Kundalini energy cannot go up. So it starts to get diverted and so much energy goes there that it cracks. Yeah. So unless you're doing crazy things and you're not guided by a proper teacher and lack um, of purification lack of purification like um then then there might be cracks but generally it's more to do with uh, a premature awakening of uh, of um, clairvoyance yeah which so happy ganesh chaturthi everybody which yes. course teaches clairvoyance in pranic healing uh higher clairvoyance teaches higher clairvoyance in yeah, it's, called, it's called higher clairvoyance it's yes. called higher clairvoyance it's only for uh Arhatic level one and two practitioners who have been practicing for one million years no, I'm mean, joking, just joking. The <laughs> rules keep changing. How are two years? One year? Level two. Level two? Not even level one now? Mm -hmm. Okay, level two now. I think it's level Take two. Take it quickly before it goes to three. <laughs> Great. So enjoy your weekend. We'll yeah. see you Monday again. Uh, we'll continue with uh, the etheric faculties. Yep. Enjoy. Bye-bye. I'll stop first.